Hey, everybody. So I'm Michael Crusoe. I am your Common Workflow Language Community Engineer. And I'm really excited today to announce the 1.0 release of our standard and to talk a little bit about how we did it, some challenges, some opportunities, and what's next. Uh, so the title of my talk is, This is Why We Can Have Nice Things. Um, uh, so I appreciate that we have this workflow session so I don't have to explain the value of workflows or workbench systems or platforms, whatever terminology you want to use. Um, so our previous presenter kind of showed this value of having this uh, availability of, of different tools, focusing on researchers' needs, integrating, doing the data conversions, and other features that these workbenches can provide. Provenance tracking, uh, be a place where communities can support each other. Turns out, however, there are an awful lot of uh, different platforms for uh, both doing your research or in cl collaborating on it. And when we start this project, which I'll explain a bit more in detail in a bit, we started collecting a list of them because we kind of want to understand what was out there, what were the commonalities. The list is uh, it's kind of long. It gets longer. And actually flipping through the schedule, I'm going to have to add four more entries based on the talks uh, elsewhere, not, not here at BOSC, but elsewhere at the conference. Uh, and so it grows every month. So users move between systems. They come and go. Um, and each system has a different way of representing things. But where there's commonalities, we should give the, the freedom to move around between these systems. Um, so it kind of brings the question, why did we even try to do this thing? Why did we, two years ago at the CodeFest at, at BOSC, say, let's find a way for these different platforms to, to work with each other? Um, so just a little background. Uh, my co-founders are, are all here. So uh, John Chilton in the back from the Galaxy Project, Peter Amstutz from Curiverse with the Arvados platform, and Boisha Janik from Seven Bridges. And he's also here with the rest of his team. Uh, started talking about uh, what would it look like for users to be able to move their workflows from one platform to another. So why have standards? Um, beyond the advantages of being able to move your work from one system to another, standards create this, uh, what I call a collaborative surface for um, innovation. So by giving by kind of agreeing to do some things in a, in, in a common way, it allows others to bring innovations that we could have never imagined. Um, and really, we can collaborate more. So one thing that always makes me sad, because I was a tool author, um, also a, a user of these tools, is watching all these different efforts reinvent the wheel, re redo these very common things, resolve these issues, um, uh, maybe not quite learn the lessons other groups have learned. So if we have more portability, we can kind of focus on what's the new added value of a different approach. So a, a good standard shouldn't uh, diminish innovation. It should allow kind of a, a good starting point to go in a new exciting direction. Um, so uh, like I said earlier, researchers kind of need to be able to, to move things around. We all know this kind of reproducibility crisis in, in, our, uh, in science today. If you're really lucky, right, uh, somebody may be published in Giga Science and there's a Galaxy workflow, right? That's like the best sort of paper you could kind of get today. But um, I've run into the instance where I didn't have a Galaxy system set up on a cluster I had free compute on. So how was I, how was I going to be able to, to run that workflow to see what that scientist had done, which choices they made with their tools, and run it with my own data? Um, so you know, we need a standard for kind of communicating how we did our computational research. How, um, if we ran a tool that affected the outcomes, we should know exactly you know, how the tool is used. And then kind of finally, another reason to do, do standards is uh, we can't just sort of pick one winner and say this is the way to go forward. You know, a proprietary solution isn't fair. And no funder or uh, journal or other influencer is going to play a kingmaker in this space. It's not appropriate. So this is why we need a neutral standard that's meant to be portable, um, but it's also a collaborative thing. So just real briefly about the common workflow language, it describes command line tools and workflows made from them. So you know, we, don't do work, we don't do web services yet. Um, we don't do programmatic workflows that change path based on decision making. That could come down the line. But we decide, let's still do something, one thing well and then build from there. So it really was a community grassroots space standard. Um, and we've run ourselves openly from the beginning. Um, 
and we've built in extensibility. So we really want people to implement CWL, but also describe their own uniqueness, what their platform does uh, uh, well, so that we can kind of look at a community. And as we decide, hey, that's a useful thing, we can pull that into the standard, just like we do with web browsers. Each browser web browser manufacturer innovates on their own, hopefully openly. And then as it's seen, this is a useful design. This is how things should be expressed. It's pulled into the, the central standard. Um, so we sort of look at these sort of shared nothing clusters, but we also pay attention to academic ones that have you know, a shared file system, cloud, and local execution. A lot of our initial implementers use Docker, but we've added a lot of support for people who, don't have, who can't run Docker on their academic computing system. Um, that's been very important to me and something I've been um, championing in the project. So what's been really exciting is that this, uh, what started as four people at a, a code fest grew into a, a pretty wide project with a lot of participants. And um, so just quickly, why use this? Why use CWO? Why get excited about it? Um, I know a lot of people, if you're a developer type like me, uh, you love working at the command line in the terminal, and you love that users could have access to your tools in a system that's going to provide a nice graphical user interface, but you, you personally don't want to work there. So by working in CWL to develop your tool description and your pipeline, you can run on your laptop any old way you want to, but then deploy it to the cluster, the cloud, you know, the, the nice front end, um, and kind of be able to have that conversation. So I'm not going to go into a lot of technical details about CWL's actual syntax. Um, some of the other talks might go onto that, or you can kind of see our user guide online. But I just want to share some of our design principles. We really want to make it easy for implementers to adopt the standard. Um, I think now that 1.0 is out, we can improve our tooling and how we communicate the standard to really make that a lot easier. Um, this is the benefit of any release. But again, we're looking at use cases, so not just the analyst um, who is a specialist and they're the only ones who are going to be working on this. We, need, we want these descriptions to be readable by um, non-experts, uh, but also to be rich enough to enable graphical user interface uh, generation, and for systems that are also rich enough to be able to do conversions to and from. I'd already mentioned the extensions, and we're big proponents of the linked data ecosystem. So you can bring your own ontology for metadata, um, and we accept all that, and your uh, platforms can reason about that and do, do smart things, and we've always tried to be pragmatic. So just to kind of briefly about metadata, this is, allows communities that have, that because they're the experts in, in their field and their subfield to use those vocabularies they've already developed to enhance their tool descriptions, whether it's the file format things you expect or the meaning of a value, they can reuse uh, this existing work in describing their workflows and even do some reasoning about it. So one uh, particular collaboration we, we use to just drive this feature is with the EDAM ontology out of uh, the European Life Sciences uh, Network, Elixir, to, because they have a much richer way, richer way of expressing file formats, right? And so you can reason about them using their ontology. Um, but we didn't, we, didn't bake that, we didn't bake EDAM into the standard, we just support any uh, RDF ontology. So we have a bunch of early adopters, many of whom are presenting, um, so I'll let them speak for themselves. And I, of course, I just want a quick slide showing uh, the authors and, and contributors specifically of this, this version. Um, and I, I think the, the broad list of participants speaks pretty loudly. So, I mean, I, my title of the talk was, this is why we can have nice things. So how did, how did we do this, right? Uh, like I said, we've kind of started in an ad hoc fortune, in an ad hoc way, and we've been working ever since to add as much formality as is needed, but no more. So we did an open mailing list, we moved on to GitHub, we've been holding frequent meetings over um, Google Hangouts at times that work well for both North America and Europe, um, and then also taking notes and emailing them out for those who can't participate. Um, and then we've also working on paying people to do some of this work. So right now we have one full-time person, that's me, and hopefully there will be others who beyond part of their day job have dedicated funding to pay attention to this project, grow the community, see that the needs are being met, uh, and do the outreach that's, that's necessary. I do. All right. So I, 
this model um, of, of developing a standard, I've started calling community-based standards development, and it's really different than maybe what people think about when they think standards. You might think about ISO, the International Standards Organization, or regulatory-based standards. They're very heavyweight, they're slow, and they're expensive. And these are all anti-goals for that uh, this community had. So there's actually a great uh, website about an openstand.org. Uh, it's about modern paradigm for standards development. And we were kind of doing this, and we, then we found this out. It's like, oh, cool, there's some other people who kind of believe in this approach. They're openly developed. The standards are free. Um, decisions are made in the open. Uh, and adoption is voluntary. So uh, I'd love to see this grow into something that's so useful that it's used really quite widely. But I'm not here to force anybody to, to use this. Um, so, but there's still some challenges in, 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 uh, in developing a community-based standard, which, of course, comes down to uh, scaling the community and sustaining the project. Uh, and so these are actually open questions for us. We have some ideas. Um, we, we'd love to hear from everybody else as, in as, that, as we are found to be useful. Um, we, we're looking to increase our support and our, our partnerships. Um, so one, I think with challenges though come good opportunities. So there are other standards that working in this space that we're, we're coordinating with um, that are kind of in a similar sort of semi-funded modality. And so I just want to present this vision, right? That in, let's say, three to five years, every paper that has computational methods comes with a rich enough description about where the data came from, who did, who did it, who did the works so or attribution, and any you know, metadata provenance. And it's an executable description. So you can go rerun it. But we, so we care about reproducibility. But I think reuse is almost more important. How can, my, how can I take this technique with, with my data? Which actual, how did they use these programs in a new way that maybe I can learn from? Um, and so this, this other standard is called researchobject.org. Um, Carol Goebel's group at the University of Manchester. I think it's really tremendous. And, um, but it's interesting. They don't, they don't yet have dedicated funding. Neither do we, per se, right? So I think there's an opportunity here, and I'm kind of promoting that can we work together? Because they have everything but a concrete workflow re representation, and that's what we are. We are this concrete workflow representation. So we've agreed informally to work together, but what I, um, the pitch I will be making over the next many months is how can we fund this as a sustainable thing? It, isn't that an exciting vision, right? Download the paper, all the details are there, the program versions and the options, no more tiers. We can do this. How can we have nice things? We have to do the work. We have to fund them. We have to build them together collaboratively. So in support of this, there is a workshop on sustainable uh, software for science practices and experiences. It's the fourth one. I'm co-organizing it this year um, uh, with the rest of the team. And I helped add this track on actually a working session to, to build things like this that we need for a future of our sustainable science. So it's not too late. July 10th is the deadline for submissions. But you can still attend even if you don't get a submission in. Um, so, so please join us in building this future together openly. We can do some open public grant writing, too, which is kind of exciting. So quickly, what's next for us? We're going to make a US-based charitable entity or find a fiscal sponsor to own the standard um, and have a formal governance model. We would definitely improve our tooling uh, to increase comfort for users, integrators. We have a Google Summer of Code mentee who has kind of blown us away with his productivity. So he's got an arg parse to CWL tool. So if you have a program written in Python that's using arg parse, we can programmatically describe it in CWL, at least its inputs. Um, and that's, that's there. It just needs a bit more polish. And, um, and I hope to see more uh, implementations from our partners. And again, that, the integration with research objects. So thank you all very much. And after the whole session is done, we'd like to do a community photo for the CWL. So if you've used it, contributed to it, said huzzah, we'd love for you to come and get a photo with us. Thank you.